Teachers TV have asked me to do a masterclass in English, and I've decided to do comma usage, as I think it's the key to becoming a really good writer. The students are taken from two London schools and are from years 8 to 11. We're learning this. How to use a comma in five different ways. How many different ways are there to use a comma? Five. Point out. Do that. Do that. Do that one. How many different ways to use a comma? Five. Well done. Good stuff. Could you grab either a cushion, a beanbag, or a seat and find a space somewhere, anywhere, at random, around? Yeah. Anywhere. Doesn't matter. You've got to be able to, that's great, Bill. You've got to be able to tap your foot on the floor. Can I hear you tapping? Okay, can I hear you not tapping? I had an English teacher and he used to talk to me about the music of the language. And I never understood a word of what he was talking about. You know, the mu language isn't music, it, music's music. It, it, it doesn't work, sir. And it took me years to understand what this teacher was talking about. That actually there is a musical link to language. If you look at music as being both rhythm and melody, we can see that it, with writing, that the melody might be the words and the punctuation itself might be the rhythm. I'm going to play you a piece of music with your right foot, not your left. It's got to be your right. You've got to go along to the beat of the music that I'm going to play you. First track, please. I'm going to walk down some back streets and do myself some crying. In rhythm. Good the And cut the track. I didn't say cut. <laughs> right, is this an interesting rhythm? No, it's not an interesting rhythm. Rachel, what's, why is it not an interesting rhythm? What's wrong with it? Say again. No, it's plain. It's very plain. It's very simple. What, anybody else got an opinion about that rhythm? Why, why does it not appeal to us? It's boring. What's boring? Yeah. Right, sorry, Joe, say that again. It doesn't go with the music that you played. Okay, so there's the a rhythm certain... The rhythm's not the same. There's a certain jarring thing about it. But the second track will do something different. We won't do that. Can you just click your fingers on the offbeat? Right, can we have the second track, please? She's a media girl. She's a love from the world. It's a shining. It's such an exciting world. Right, stop the track, keep clicking. What's the difference between what I'm doing and what you're doing? I'm waiting a beat, because actually the beat of that is on the off beat. Can we hear it again? For, is that possible to hear it again from the beginning? And watch what I'm doing. Right, we stop it. Okay, pull it, pull in at the front. Just wait a second. What were you going to say? You're taking a pause in between the... There beat. seems to be a pause. Right. What, what's happening there is the beat is actually... Usually we go one, two, three, four, and it's actually on the off beat. What, what do we think about that as a rhythm as opposed to the first one? The first one, you fall like easily asleep because it's boring, while the second one is faster, so you're more okay, likely second, to enjoy it. Right, the, the tempo is different, but it, it's also... Did you, what did you say, Jacob? Um, I said that there was it was syncopation and the chords were changing. OK, there's a more syncopated feel to it when it's on the offbeat. So the second piece of music was more interesting. Right, the third piece of music, we're just going to play the drums on, our, on the top of our leg. OK? We t t can we have the third piece of music, please? Go. And on your knee. And on your shoe. Tonight. And on your butt. <laughs> and on your inside calf. Good. OK, we we'll stop it. Right, rhythm is vitally important in a piece of music. And this English teacher of mine that was telling me that, that language is music actually has started to see his point. Now, if music is a combination of melody and rhythm, then actually you can apply that to, to a piece of writing. Now, if the words are the melody in a piece of writing, what provides the rhythm? 
Well, yes, Joe, sorry, punctuation. mate. Yeah, the punctuation provides the rhythm. Now, if we think about that first track going, bush, 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 that, that's, a piece of, that's a, a piece of writing with, with perhaps only four stops in it. If we think about the second one, it was just slightly more sophisticated. That's a piece of writing with full stops and commas. Actually, the third one had loads of syncopated rhythms going. And that's a piece of writing with a full range of punctuation. Now, the issue we use in the full range of punctuation is you can't use it unless you know how the things go. And the most difficult one, and it's got five different ways you use it, is the comma. Let's have a look at what happens when you don't have punctuation. Uh, Right, this is a Shakespeare speech without any punctuation in it. You should have the speech in your packs. Is this a dagger which I see before me, the handle towards my hand, can let me clutch thee, I have thee not, and yet I see thee still out, thou not fatal, visual, and sensible to feeling as the sight or art, thou but a dagger of the mind of false creation proceeding from the heat of breast brain, I see thee yet in form as palpable as this, which I now draw, thou marshalest me the way I was going, and such an instrument I was to use mine eyes as... You, you get a point. It's... Without the punctuation, there's no meaning. And punctuation came about as instructions for actors to tell them when to take a pause and how to take a pause. Diego, could you give us your rendition of the dagger speech without any punctuation as quick as you possibly can? <laughs> Superstar. In this dagger which I see before me in the handle towards my hand, come let me declare that. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's have a look at this poem. So without, without punctuation, there's no meaning, there's no rhythm. And, and, and let's, let's do something here where, if you have a look at it, where you see a comma, you do one clap. Where you see a full stop, one, two, three, four. Where you see a semicolon, it's one, two. Here we go. The stops point out with truth. The time of the pause, a sentence doth require every clause. One, two, three, four. At every comma, stop while one you count. A semicolon, two is the amount. A colon doth require the time of three, the period four, as learned men agree. So th this is giving you direct instructions, and this may have been something that, that you, you learnt in primary school about how to use a comma. That it actually tells you to take a pause. Is that correct? It doesn't seem that punct punctuation should be done with um, counts and stuff, so it doesn't seem right. It, well, it certainly doesn't seem to tell you where to put the things. Because that's not how you write. You're, you're not writing and going, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll take a pause here and I'll put a comma. I'll take a pause here. That's, there, there's actually a system of rules. Okay? And the, the issue that we've got in education is that these have got rules as where to put them, and nobody ever really teaches you those rules. Um, what is the one, the one rule of the comma that we all, pretty well all of us, learned in primary schools? Uh, Uche. You pause. Pause. It, what, would you like to go a little bit further than that, Ache? What do you mean? Um, like, you don't read it as one sentence. Like, when you get to the comma, you, you like, like t take a breath. Is that telling you where you put them? Um, I don't think so. Is it telling you, is it giving you instructions as a reader or as a writer? Reader. Girls, what, what do you... As a reader. How can you tell that? Because when you read in there... Yeah. It's easy for you. It's how, it, yeah. how you read it, not yeah. how you write it. Yeah, so, the, so those instructions are actually correct, but they're instructions to the reader. And the issue that we, we sometimes teach is, is we tell you these as if they're instructions to the writer. They're not. The writer needs to know exactly where you put the comma. Because yeah, if, if, the, if you, the writer doesn't know the rules, the commas are going to be in the wrong places and the pauses are going to be in the wrong places. And crucially, the music is not going to work. First way to use a comma, not to, not to create a pause. Your primary school teachers have you taught you this. You do know it. You use a comma to separate what? Words in a list. Yeah, words in a list. Could you sit in a semicircle, please, like that? We use commas to separate items in a list. When we do that, can we go, shh, do it? So we imagine we're in a shop. And you've got to think of your, in your mind the weirdest thing you could possibly buy in a shop. And we're going to do a list of them. And then after each one, we go, shh, sir, I went to the shops. It's coming your way, Jake. I went to the shops and I bought a pair of socks which were deliberately too small for me. Shh. Monkey brains. Shh. Kangaroo shoe. Shh. Dog hat. Shh. A dog hat. <laughs> That's fantastic. 
Citeu. Um, banana spilling. Shh. Chocolate. That's, just, that's normal. <laughs> she bought a dog hat. What did you buy? Chocolate. Let's <laughs> that's, 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 get them weird. Angelica. Cat shoes. Shh. Dog food. Shh. Trousers. Shh. No, no, well, but brilliant. Less brilliant. Boring. <laughs> On to Aisha. <laughs> Cow poo. Cow poo. Well done. Shh. A pig heart. Shh. Fantastic. At the back. Human steel. <laughs> and coming down to Maddie. Cat fur. Cat fur, brilliant. Shh. Up to Emerald. A branch. A branch. Shh. Brilliant. Yoga. Elephant's nose. Excellent. Shh. For Tim. Dog jumper. Shh. A cat sweater. A cat sweater. Shh. Mercy. A snake. Shh. Monkey pants. Shh. Michael. Alien. Alien. Well done. Shh. A water for my fish. Shh. That's superb. An alien head. Shh. And we stop. We'll stop here. Stop here. Because, Uche, you're going to say and. Rachel, what are you going to say? Because Uche's going to say and, what we're we not going to do after Rachel says her item. Put, uh, you're not going to put a comma. <coughs> Fantastic, right. So your item is? An ogre. An ogre, you're going to say? And. So there's no comma there. A fridge. <coughs> not only do we use commas to separate items, we use them to separate adjectives. Look at my trousers, please. Come up with one word to describe my trousers. If you find my trousers too boring to describe, then describe my hands or... or watch it. <laughs> <laughs> or my shoes or whatever. An item of clothing. So if we were to refer to my trousers as... Black. Black. Shh. Cheek. Cheek. Ooh. Oh, shit. And it hurts so much more because it's the truth. Shh. <laughs> Shh. Slim. Shh. Material. Long. Shh. Too small. Shh. Too oh, short. Yeah, long, small. No, just. Short. Shh. Ugly. Shh. <laughs> Shh. Weird. Shh. Grand. Shh. Brown. Shh. Grey. Shh. And Diego, after you, Kane's going to say and, and Uche, you'll come up with the last one. Oh. Punky. Punky. Lovely adjective. What do we not have? Because he's going to say and. Don't have a comma. Don't have a comma. Kane? And. Uche? It's not my turn, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I deliberately skipped to you because you're asleep. Um, uh, wild. And what do we end up with? Oh. Poor stop. Well done. OK, second way to use a comma is to introduce direct speech. And, we, you know, we, we probably did get taught this a few years ago, but we, we forgot it. So if we have a look on the screen, the middle-aged school teacher stopped and said, if you notice, before you open the speech marks and you have the capital letter, there's a, a comma beforehand. Could you stand up, please? Find a space. <coughs> Here we go. Series of actions. Do that. That's comma. comma. Open speech marks. Open speech marks. And we'll just leave it to open, OK? Capital. Capital. Text. 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 Full stop. Full stop. Close. Close. What do we notice about the relationship between the full stop <laughs> and the closing punctuation? OK, so the full stop is inside the closing speech marks. OK, we'll do it again. Comma. comma. Open. Capital, text, full stop, close. Comma, open, capital, text, full stop, close. Comma, open, capital, text, full stop, close. Comma, open, capital, text, full stop, close. Right, could we take seats? Can I have three footballs, please? Right, series of moves with football skills to remember it. Right, the first one is the drag back. Right, you ready? So you, you put your right foot on the ball. And drag back, you just drag it back. And that's the comma. OK, so for the comma, we do the drag back. What's next? Speech marks. Oh. Open the speech marks. Yeah. So we have to, this is difficult, we have to swap feet, and we go tap, tap. And then capital up there. What's next? Uh, uh, uh. Um, You've got to have some text before you have the full stop. So we run around the studio. Go! Run. Right. Run. <laughs> <laughs> And then whenever you fancy it, you put the ball down, do the full stop. And because it's a piece of direct speech, we still have to close the speech marks. What do we do? Tap it twice with what foot? No. Because it's, yeah, if you think, I did it, tap, tap with the left first, so we should be doing it with the left. It's with the right, tap, tap. Uche? Let's just rehearse it down a little bit. Uche, if you come in the middle a bit more, Matt. So we practice the comma. OK, open the speech marks. 
You're a little bit slower than him. Because you wasn't paying attention again. Um, then what do we do next? Capital letter. Capital letter. Text for run around. Anytime you like, stop and full stop. And then what do we do finally? Well done. Okay? Let's do it all together. Comma. Open speech marks. Capital. Text. Full stop. Close the speech marks. Fantastic. Well done. That's the second way of using a comma. Take seats and I'll have one of those calls myself. Jake, can I take Right, third way. You use commas when you join two sentences together. And there's a special word, which we, we know what verbs are, we know what nouns are, this special word called a conjunction, which refers to words that join those sentences together. And they're generally sh short words. Aisha, what would you say the first one might be? Begins with A. Four. Four. Well done. And the next one, Anastasia. And. And. Now, and is a difficult one in that... Generally speaking, people say you don't put a comma before and. If it's in the last of a list, you don't put a comma before and. If it's Tom and Jerry or Pinky and Perky or Dick and Dom, you don't put a comma before and. But if you're adding an additional piece of information or additional sentence to another sentence, you do. Good enough for Charles Dickens, good enough for you. What's the next one? Shout them out. No. Shout the other one out. But. Shout the next one out. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, generally speaking, those words are conjunctions and we will often have a comma before them. Now, you should find around a set of spoons. Could you grab a pair of spoons? You put your index finger in between them, your middle finger on top and your thumb on the bottom. Da da da. Da, da, da. So we join those two together. Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba, ba, ba. Ba, da, 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 da. Fantastic, perfect. Right, I think this is the most important piece of information you don't learn at school quite often. That you use commas before conjunctions, <laughs> commas before connectives and joining words. Um, and the song is in the style of a Cockney pub singer. And you have to, in the style of a Cockney pub singer, sing it with ah at the end. So I'm going to sing it at you, and you sing it back at me with ah at the end. And then we'll bring in a ba 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 da ba da ba ba ba. Right, we'll just do the first line. Commas before connectives ah. Perfect. The boys in green, they got it. Okay? You, you, you sing it back first and then go ba 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 da ba da ba ba ba. Here we go. Commas before connectives ah. Brilliant. It is the golden rule. It is the golden rule. If you don't put a comma before because ah. If you don't put a comma before because Then you're a blinking fool. Then you're a blinking fool. Fantastic. Well done. And the next bit of it goes. Commas before connectives are. Commas before connectives are. Can really do your nut. Can really do your nut. So slap a comma on for then and so and always before but. So slap a comma on for then and so and always before but. We'll try and bring it back. Right, don't do the spoons, just do singing back to me. So slap a comma on na. So slap a comma on na. So slap a comma on for then and so what? Uh. So slap a comma on before then and so So slap a comma on for then and so and always before but. So slap a comma on before then and so and always before but. Fantastic over there, totally on, on the beat. What's the golden rule? Um, if you put a comma before... Commas before connectives. What kind of fool are if you don't put a comma before... Blinky! What kind, let me finish the question. What kind of fool are if you don't put a comma before whereas? Blinky. What kind of fool are if you don't put a comma before whilst? Blinky. Same thing. Um, what word must you always, always, always put a comma before? Then. 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 Interesting that there's so many... Well done, mate. Absolutely spot on. It says here, and always before but. OK? 
Okay, so what word do you always put a comma on before? Before. But. But, well done. What other three words do you generally put a comma on before? Then and then. So, always, always, before. Fantastic. And if you pick up only one piece of information from this lesson, <coughs> good, and again, good enough to Charles Dickens, good enough for you, that if you, if you use the connective but, you always put a comma before it. Okay, so it, that actually, that technique, putting commas before connectors, Micah, it is good enough to move you up a whole level in writing, a whole national curriculum level. Right, the fourth way of using the comma, let's go back over to three. You use them to separate items in lists, you use them to open direct speech, you use them before connectives or conjunctions. Is after an adverbial start. Anybody know anything about adverbs? Jadil, do you know, could you tell me perhaps what an adverb is? A word that, that describes a verb. A word that describes a verb. What's a verb, Jadil? A doing word. So it's a word that describes a doing word? Yes. So, if a doing word is walking, how am I walking? Slowly. Oh. I'm walking slowly. How else? Sloppily. Sloppily. Diogo, how am I walking? Clum clumsy. Clumsily. Drunkenly. Limply. Okay. What do all those words have at the end of them? L-Y. Oh. Yeah. And a lot, of, a lot of primary school practitioners will describe these as L-Y starters. If you start a sentence with an L-Y word, you slap a comma on after it. That's just to give you a sense of the, the variety and the number of L-Y words there are. Um, I'm going to ask you, could you just moan at me? Go on. Oh. Right, I'm going to give you a series of words. I want you to moan in the manner of that word. Right, could you moan reluctantly? Moan. Good. Moan repeatedly. Good, good, good. <laughs> moan, moan roughly. <laughs> Excellent. Moan rudely. <laughs> I, I get the suspicion some of you are just shouting now. Moan sadly. <laughs> moan seriously. <laughs> that, if Micah gets serious, you'll tell it. <laughs> uh, moan smoothly. <laughs> Softly. <laughs> Successfully. <laughs> Suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> Tenderly. <laughs> Violently. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we'll leave it there. If you start a sentence with any of those words, so what could you do violently? I suppose you can moan. <laughs> violently, he moaned, doesn't, doesn't cut it. It's violently, he moaned. And if you think about putting the comma after the adverbial you'll start, it kind of does a James Bond thing to the sentence. Silently he crept in is not the same as silently he crept in. The second one's better. Interestingly, for those of you doing GCSE, however is regarded as an adverb. So if you start a sentence with however, you put a comma straight after it. Um, and finally, this is the difficult one. My I've got a very good friend, a lady called Ros Wilson, who calls this the two-comma trick. Jacob, could you stand there? I'm just going to pass you a football. Right, this is how a sentence usually works. It runs from A to B. So, <coughs> what would the sentence be, Diogo? What would this sentence be? Describe what you just saw there. A football being kicked. Uh, a football being kicked. <laughs> Give me a subject to the sentence. Who kicked the football? Subject. Mr. Beadle, too. Right. So, uh, sir. Right. Jacob kicked the football to sir. So that sentence has got a subject and an object. Um, and it goes from A to B. Sir kicked the football to Jacob. And what does Jacob do at the end of the sentence? He puts his foot on it to, us to show the full stop. Now, what happens... Christian, can you come and stand in the way, please? Right, what happens if there's an obstacle in the way? It's a good answer. Comma is a good answer. But look, look what happens. I'm just going to try and do the same sentence. So this is, Sir passes to Jacob. There's a pause. But we've got a sentence. It cannot go from A to B. So what, what, if you were playing football, what would you do? Pass it. Go around him. You would, you'd go around him. Like that, okay. yeah? Alternatively, what else might you do? Lob him. Yeah. Lob him. <laughs> <laughs> Barge him, push him. Uh, Anastasia, could you come and stand there? Passing. Yeah, simple football would pass it, wouldn't they? So we've got, sir, I can't, can't get it, Jacob. 
So we do a comma. So, sir, comma, cleverly avoiding the defender and completely missing Anastasia was <laughs> <all> I can. <laughs> Don't watch it as it goes past. Stop it. OK. So, sir, comma, cleverly avoiding the defender and what, what do we put there? It's a two comma trick. Um, it's a two comma trick. Comma. We've already <laughs> had one comma to suit two. So, comma, Anastasia. So, I drag back now and then you pass on to Jacob. And we can do, do it back to front. So, Jacob, comma, so do the drag back. Cleverly avoiding the defender, comma, drag back, passes to Sir. Okay, take a seat. That, that, for, for want of any real grammatical knowledge, my friend calls it the two comma trick. I would call it an embedded, um, an embedded clause. Why would you call that an embedded clause? Because there's a phrase in two commas, in between. There's two a commas. phrase within the two commas, in yeah. between the two commas. How does that relate to it being embedded? Um, because it's embedded in the two <laughs> commas. Okay, so the phrase okay. itself is embedded in the two commas, or alternatively. Actually, you're totally right. It's embedded within a sentence. That we had a sentence, Sir passes to Jacob, and it was like that, but we put an additional piece of material into it. So it went from Sir, sir passes to Jacob to Sir cleverly avoiding the defender, and that goes in there, passes to Jacob. Right, and j just to sum up, this is what we attempted to learn this lesson, whether we managed to do it or not. We were looking at using a comma in five different ways. And the five different ways are to separate items in lists, which includes lists of adjectives. So if you have two adjectives before a noun, okay, he was wearing smelly starch trousers, you use a comma to separate the adjectives. <coughs> use commas before you open direct speech. And crucially, this is a piece of information a lot of people don't know, that you put the closing speech marks around the closing full stop or comma. Use commas before connectives. If you use the connective but, you always put a comma before it. Humbug. What is the fourth way of using a comma? Can anybody tell me what the fourth one is? Uh... After an adverb, you'll start. So if you start a sentence with an L-Y word, you put a comma immediately afterwards. And the fifth one, the most difficult, is an embedded clause. Which one of those five do I think is the most important and the one that will radically improve your writing if you use it? Embedded. Embedded. Strangely enough, yeah, the embedded clause is very, very <coughs> difficult to do. It will, it will lift you up to be an... If you use an embedded clause well, you become an A-grade writer. In order to make sure that you're a C-grade writer, which is the one that you have to use? It's the, the, that won't make you a C-grade writer. Before connected. The, the, Joe again? The one before connected. Yeah, it's the commas before connected. If you, if you can get into the habit of routinely putting commas before connectives, or commas before conjunction, except, accepting Rachel's point about if, if you're using the connective and, I went to the shops and I bought a bottle of milk, that doesn't have a comma before it. But commas before connectives, in terms of writing, it really is the golden rule. Right, can you give yourselves a round of applause? You've done well. <laughs>